Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. Jake's got some thoughts on the Red Sox. Replay in baseball got put to a cool test and good pitchers stinking. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball presented to you by SeatGeek. Thank you very much for tuning in. Appreciate it as always. It's the midweek episode, August 23rd, 2022. Episode number 532 of the program. How about that, Trev? Nice glove. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm happy to have all the boys together here. I believe when this comes out, it'll be August 24th. So that's awesome. That is true. Um, happy today. We are recording on the 23rd. Happy birthday, Kobe. Uh, my guy. I know you're up there looking down on this show. He was a baseball fan. So uh, I'm doing great though. And uh, I'm looking forward to all of our topics. There's some good ones, specifically Jake's. I want to see how he dances around this one. Jake, how you doing? Ooh, Trev. John Davis, everyone with us, you know I'm a phenomenal dancer, so it won't be an issue for you me. You actually are. I am. Um, I, I don't know. I think it's a, it's a nice mix of my weird body, athleticism, yeah. willingness to look bad if necessary. Yeah, you're fearless. That's what it is. Immense sexuality. So, uh, yeah, excited to get into a topic ep for the boys as we're escaping the dog days like we talked about. Um, and heading towards this final, final stretch, like month and a half, not even almost. So pretty nuts, Jimmer. Month and a half. Well, it's a little over, right? Because it goes to October 4th now or October 6th. When you is the, it? It's... Get the first week of October. So you got another yeah. week of August and you get a week of October. So six yeah. weeks left. That's cool. Final. Those final last month. three weeks are kind of when you're like, what do we need? Yeah. What's like, what's happening. And a lot of races are spreading out. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of interesting how it's going to unfold. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Cause a lot of teams that aren't going to make the playoffs that we've been talking about for a while that have been like, kind of like on the good radar for a long time. And I just was realizing like, Oh wait, a lot of them aren't going to make it. There's probably like three or four teams that we've talked extensively about that just will be out of the playoffs. And I think it's the races here with the added wild card, I think are going to be really good. It hasn't like, messed too much up. I think the season means something. I'm excited about the three game or two. I think that's the, the one thing I wasn't sure about because I did as a fan, enjoy the freaking one game winner take all thing, but this rewards the better team. I think. We'll see how it plays out because the one game was yeah. really fun. It is excruciating if you're in it, but Oof. as far as a marquee event, it was really good. But yeah, right now, the Twins, the White Sox, the Orioles, the Red Sox, not that there's too many surprises. You knew the Central was most likely going to be a one team division, but they got a lot of run here and they're on the outs looking in. Well, yeah, uh, for me, if. Go ahead. Jake. Central's three games right now, Minnesota, Chicago, and Cleveland. So that's got a chance to be a really good division finale. Although we don't love yeah. that division. Um, Braves three game back from the Mets as we record this. So, um, you know, Milwaukee, that's one with, that we circled last step without you, Jim, that it's like, whoa, they're currently out mm -hmm. of the dance five games back of St. Louis. That that's one. Uh, I mean, that's kind of the biggest shock on the board. The central, both one bid conferences, basically. Potentially, unless someone. I really hope that's not the case. I really Which, hope that's not the case. Well, it's kind of what everyone thought going into the season. We thought that NL might get two, and they might. So we're right there. Looks like the AL is going to be one, right? Depends it's what happens way. the rest of the way. Yep. I'm well, still yeah, holding so out hope for my Chicago White Sox. I don't know why. I have no idea why. Tony La Russa is just infuriating everybody, even White Sox fans, mostly White Sox fans. You see what he just did to Kopech? Yes. I mean, that's kind of where I was going with that. It's it's bad, man. If anyone doesn't know, I mean, he, was, he was hurt. He threw an 88-mile-per-hour fastball. He sits like 94. They went and checked I, on him. 
got a reliever warm and then kept him in through 18 more pitches. He's been left with injury. Yeah. Once you check on him, you're just taking that. Once you notice that first fastball down that much, I mean, I'm sure everybody in the dugout looked and was like, what is going on? And that's, you just go right away. Yeah. This kid has had a phenomenal year for you and he's part of your future for sure. Like it's, I don't know. There's really no words for it. Yeah. All right. Well, we got, uh, there was some cool uh, updates on the testing between the new, like all the stuff they're testing out in the minors, the bases, the pitch clock, the robo ump. So we're going to chat about that. Jake wants to talk about the Red Sox. And then I fell into a, a little rabbit hole that ended up not as interesting as I thought it was going to be. So I'll, I'll do that at the end. Jake, floor is yours. Jim, let me tell you about Roman first, uh, my man. Can I tell you about GetRoman.com slash talking today? If you get, if you do that, you'll get $15 off your first order of Roman T support. Testosterone is important. It's important to your libido, mm-hmm. blood health, and more. So if you're ready to show up for yourself from the inside out, start with Roman's testosterone support supplement. Man, the way the thing I always come back to, if this is something you're dealing with and you know about this and you have a low T situation on your hands, why wouldn't you address it? Why wouldn't you? Or if you even think that's something you got going on, get in touch with Roman. They're the experts in this and they can get you the help you need if you need it. They offer flexible monthly plans and free two day shipping. So Go to GetRoman.com slash talking today. If approved, you'll get $15 off your first order of Roman T support. That's GetRoman.com slash talking. Go check them out. Uh, if approved, you will get $15 off your first Roman T support order. Guys, take care of it. Specialty, you raised your hand. So I can call Roman, yeah. set up a, an appointment. They let me know how my T level is. They will, let's see. We've got I'm going to their- talk to a qualified, you know, physician and they're going to let me know. I might check it out. Why not? You're getting Because imagine if I was this good yeah. on low T. Right. I can't imagine. Get your T levels right. I can't imagine. You'd be like, a, you'd be like Raul Abanez hitting homers in your 40s. Mm. Um, 300 Jimmy Jacks. 305, Mr. Worldwide. Uh, yeah, it. It, and we kind of we talked about some teams at the start today, and I, I want to check in, kind of where where we were at with certain teams. We've been tough on the Central this year, the AL Central, aka the AL Mid. Uh, it's mm. literally Middle America, and the performance has been mid. Um, you know, we've been tough on the White Sox. We just we just hit them in the open. We didn't even talk about it, and and the White Sox got a little <laughs> shrapnel. That's true. Um, <laughs> and that's just kind of how it's been this year. And then the news today. The Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, Artie Moreno, is looking to potentially sell the team. Big headlines there. We'll see what goes on with that, but that is big news in the sport. And the Angels are the other team that kind of gets the most shrapnel from this show and baseball fans. It's it's easy to say, and it's kind of right to say, right? The Angels, I think they've missed seven straight postseasons. Um, you know, we've talked ad nauseum about Trout and Otani and how, how can you have the two most talented players and nothing else around them. As we check in, and Jim, you mentioned the standings again and, you know, hesitant to will things shuffle again, and we'll see what happens. I mean, this time last year with less games to play, the Cincinnati Reds were still in the playoffs. Um, I, I believe the San Diego Padres were still in the playoffs, and, and they faded out. So, you know, there's a chance that we're still going to get a shakeup in this baseball season. And the one team, the Boston Red Sox, who they had their trade deadline. They did they did a reshuffle of sorts. They ended up with Hosmer. They snagged Tommy Pham, yet they traded away Vasquez. Um, and, you know, they're floating around there six games back uh, of the wild card. But more importantly, there's three teams in front of them. So... Uh, That is a tall, daunting task. They've been done in the East for a while. They're two games below 500. They would have to jump. The White Sox, I aforementioned, are two games ahead of them. The Minnesota Twins are are above them. And the Baltimore Orioles. So the Boston Red Sox, we've mentioned it, and, and we've come and gone on it, but they are sitting 
in a pretty bad spot. Uh, a pretty bad spot. And, Jim, you, you've mentioned it a few times. Usually when Boston collapses, it's a significant collapse. Uh, you know, we've seen that in a couple years. Um, but I want to go back since 2018. They win the World Series. Awesome year. 108 wins. Dominant force in the playoffs. Uh, they rolled. And, you know, it, that was the Dombrowski effect, and there's a little after effect of that, right? And that's the whole thing with Dombrowski. If you're going to sell out, there's going to be a ripple effect to that. In 2019, we saw the start of that ripple effect. They went 84 and 78. They had the highest payroll in baseball, 222 million, and they did not make the playoffs. 2022 became a really weird year, really quick, right? Uh, no Cora, uh, Renicky uh, was in there, looking like the the ghost of Hagerstown, basically running that team. They had the fourth highest payroll. It's rude. They had the fourth. <laughs> taking that from you. They had the fourth. Ghost of Hagerstown's like an awesome guy. <laughs> so is Ron Renicky. He's a he's a baseball hero. He was a different kind of ghost. He was like a bad vibes ghost. Different vibes ghost. The Boston Red Sox had the fourth highest payroll of the top five teams with with the highest payroll. They did not make the playoffs. Sure, twenty twenty was a weird year. Everybody basically got invited to the dance, but not the fourth highest payroll. Red Sox. Um, so following up next year, you know, the Red Sox kind of sneak up on us. They host that wild card game. They do have a nice run to uh, the CS, which kind of didn't feel expected that year. Um, they were sixth in payroll, but, you know, they end up going to CS. That's a lot of teams, you know, only two teams from each league is going to get there. A, a nice year for Boston. And now here they are, sixth in pay- payroll again. And I was just going through how many talking baseball episodes we said, Give Heim some time. Um, and, you know, we're year two and a half, year three-ish uh, of, of Heim. And the Boston Red Sox are, four, are fifth in the American League East. The Orioles have passed them this year. They just played in Williamsport, and the Orioles, again, were the better team. That, I don't know. Uh, the questions this year around Boston, are they going to re-sign Devers or Bogarts? That hasn't happened and we're talking about a fifth place Red Sox team that now, uh, three times in four years, are going to have a top six payroll, and it's looking like they're going to miss the playoffs. And if I'm a Red Sox fan, and I know they've been hot about uh, not having Bogarts or Devers extended, I, I'd be hot about pretty much everything involved. It's um, you know, this this is a proud franchise. This is a championship franchise, especially the last twenty years. And uh, we're entering a really interesting spot here. So uh, that that kind of caught my attention today when I dig through and I was, I was like, what, what is a topic we should talk about? Because the White Sox um, are right behind them, seventh in payroll, but they still have a shot to win their division if they can find it in the next month and a half. Um, and yeah, the Angels, who have been kind of a punching bag of this show in baseball for the last little while, they're 10th and they've, they've kind of fluctuated around there for years, but... If you're the Boston Red Sox, man, uh, I don't know. Uh, it could be a very interesting off season this year, and I I don't know I don't know what you do. Yeah, I think the butter knifing out like 18 is is the big thing here. I mean, they won the World Series in 18. You get a lot of time mentioned. after that. I think it negates kind of everything. Like you win the World Series, you get a big buffer period. Like I'd much rather the Red Sox 10 year history than the Yankees. They've had a similar budget. They got two World Series in the last decade. And the two years before 18, 16 and 17, they won the ALE. So I think this is more of a shot at the Heim time. Which is supposed to be rebuilding. Like last year was a surprise. This year they have contracts coming off the books. Like this was the time period that they've been eyeing. If last year goes according to like what they thought and prepped for it, I don't think we're like upset or or shocked. Well, are they rebuilding? Well, they were they were waiting for Bogarts to come up, uh, Dever or JD to come off, like Avaldi to come off. Like it's all these sale comes like a lot of contracts end after this year. Yeah, I think I think this, think is this be... off season was the off season where it was like, okay, let's see what's going on because a lot of money shit gets shed. And they go get Trevor Story in anticipation of of this offseason. They sign him long term. So like it's, I think we're gonna have to see what Heim does here. Um, are we going to go out? I think this is what I believe will happen. They'll get some marquee names um, 
this offseason. They have to make a few decisions. I think Bogarts is probably – he's gone. Um, and then make a decision on Devers. And then they'll see what's – there's a big, huge free agent class. I think like a, hun- class. like a hundred – plus comes off the books this year for them. Yeah. So they can either go make the splash this year, which I, I imagine they will do something. And then I, I, I still believe in Haim and give Haim time. I think, I think last year what kind of happened randomly for them. Don't you think? Yeah. But yes. Well, that I mean, that almost makes it a little worse if we're calling their ALCS trip random and, and not, a credit to their success. Like, and, and Trev, I, I think I have to, the free agent pool next year is, is not a, a flashy one. I, I mean, I, I think the biggest name is Trey Turner, which is, if they make a move on him, but we're also talking about them losing Bogarts and, and they lost bets. And you're talking about them losing a lot of veteran talent that isn't Aaron that, judge on the market this year. Aaron judge will be there. Yeah. So go get judge. So and why didn't you Turner. mention him as the biggest one? Go. Well, He's already with the Mets in my head, Trev, after okay, after okay. winning the World Series this year. So um I think Trey Turner would fit in perfectly with the Red Sox. I yeah. mean that and you think about where that goes, Trevor Story, Trey Turner, Xander Bogarts, and then they still have more. So you room have them re signing Bogarts and Trey Turner? I mean Devers, I meant I said Devers. I meant okay. Devers. Well, I that's I mean, as as you mentioned, the names coming off the books, Nate Evaldi's been very good for them this year. Xander Bogarts has been really good for them this year. So I don't I don't know if I put that in as part of the solution uh, as we're watching the Orioles pass them. You know, the Blue Jays have their young core together. The the Yanks uh have dominated the division this year outside of their lackluster recency. And then the Rays on the opposite side of the spectrum you know, going through the recent years and their payrolls and how good they've been, it is insane. I, I know we mention it in passing in every episode we say Ray's going to raise, but the fact that they are nearly a bottom five payroll for the past five years now and, and have been in the playoffs, what they're doing is, I mean, it's, it's so impressive. It, I, I know it frustrated Jim when every team tried to copy the Rays and do their version of it. But what the Rays do uh, is is very impressive. That I don't know. I mean, if you're Boston, it, it's tough to picture them coming into next year gung ho unless they sign Judge Turner and three starting pitchers. Which I I don't think that's Heim's formula. I don't think we fully know yet because I think we need the money to come off the books and then and then it's his turn to start mixing the witch's brew. So like we'll wait and see. But I don't I don't know. I mean, they've won a World Series recently, so I don't think Red Sox fans are too upset. Yeah, I, I agree with that. There's three in our office today that, that are pretty not happy, and I, I think next year, think about what we're saying. The Red Sox have the chance to finish last place this year, um, and they have the chance to finish, I don't know, fourth or fifth next year, depending on how their free agency goes. I don't know how much time Haim is going to get. Because uh, that's a town that does demand winning. I mean, look how quick they gave Dombro the hook. So I don't know. I, I think if you're a Red Sox fan, this season hasn't been what you wanted. And pending the offseason, which, hey, Red Sox, hope you make some massive moves. We just talked about you signing two awesome free agents and, and hopefully some pitching around that. That I think there's going to be some other teams in the mix for those guys. And, uh, and I don't know. I, I don't Did know. their farm improve? They're they're the eleventh. They just updated the farm system rankings. They're eleventh uh, in that regard, which is like the highest they've been since 2016. They have a lot of their that's, higher. That's a lot of like was the problems this year. They 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 didn't have any depth. They had to go to their triple A roster, and it was like non prospect, non prospect, no potential like guys. Like not like you know, he's here. It was like oh, it's like uh, hopefully this plugs the hole a little bit. Marcelo Meyer is their their top ranked prospect. Uh, he's eighth overall in baseball. He actually is a shortstop, so maybe that does take them away from signing a Turner to a, a long term deal. Maybe they give him a three year. I don't know what they would do with that. But I think what you're referencing or what Red Sox fans will be feeling now is like the hate of uncertainty. Like, and I think maybe as a franchise like the Red Sox, you shouldn't have too many years of uncertainty. And yeah, it's just gonna. We have to see what goes on in this off season and then how it transpires. But I, I, I think Heim is not on a short leash right now. I wouldn't say that. 
I'm interested to see because I know Marcelo Meyer, his projected ETA, 2025. Uh, Casas, he's the one that next year, I know there's a lot of hope for him, and they called up Bello this year, Bello, if, if he can... If he can be a good young pitcher for them, that would obviously be important. But uh, I don't know. That's a that's a proud sports town. I love the Commonwealth, and uh, I just I, I think we might be on a tipping point. That think think about what we just said. The solution is to sign Aaron Judge and Trey Turner. I, if the Sox do that, awesome. But I, that's not what we said. Okay. Yeah, that's not what's not what we said. Okay. Yeah. Then what what <laughs> did you then what did you say is the solution for next year's Red Sox? We didn't. We said that that's when it like we'll start. We'll wait and see what Heim does. But I don't think the plan was to be a winning team last year nor this year. I think they're looked at it as when all these come off the books, let's prep. So the farm system gets better. Work whoops, guys so you can make some trades in the offseason and then sign guys. But it'll start happening then is what I think. And I agree. And I think they could make a splash in free agency this year uh, if they want someone that they could see what they they want with their team long term that matches up more with their quote unquote window I guess but I I'm on the other side too where I, I I just said like I don't think a franchise like this should have too many years of uncertainty I don't think that's it should happen I mean that's way. that's kind of what I'm saying I mean we're we're talking three out of four now and and depending what does happen next year for a really proud sports franchise that's also paying a lot of money I, I don't know if uh, I I know a World Series ring can cover up a lot, but you know, 2018 will be five years ago next year, something like that. I so. mean, I mean, I mean, how many teams can say that though, Jake? <laughs> I mean, they got two in the 24. last ten, like five in the last fifteen. They they got some stuff to fall All back right. on. Well, I will circle up with you guys this time next year, and we'll see where the Boston Please Red do. Sox are. Well, I'm you, not saying they're going to be good next year, so I don't know why you keep saying. You're going to circle up with us this time next year. I, I actually you're, called you're them being kind of, mid this year. Yeah, I said they're going to be 500 club. You're, and kind, of miss, you're kind of missing the point of my topic, so I'll kick it to you guys. Is it I, your topic of the Red Sox stink? Uh, that the franchise is kind of in a worse spot than I think you guys are leading on. Yes. I like that. I like it. Yeah, it I could be worse. I think they're rebuilding, retooling. You know, when Theo went to the Cubs, he said five years. When Jeter went to the Marlins, he said five years. We're in year two and a half. So, you know, I think that that's the yeah, plan. The Marlins, the Marlins had very different payrolls and standards than than the Boston Red Sox. Of course, but I'm saying that new GMs usually say it's a five year window. Well, we will see. And that's why the I keep Marlins have that. another electric pitcher too. I don't know where they just keep finding these guys. Yeah. It could be worse for Red Sox fans. You could be Angels fans. I feel like we do need to touch on the potential sale of the team from Artie Moreno. Why is that and bad? Like, like, Wouldn't Angels fans want that? The well, I'm saying you could be Angels fans over the last decade. You just mentioned how many World Series titles the Red Sox have won. Uh, oh, yes, has just yeah. had nothing to show for it. Right. But yeah, you have the announcement now. I mean, the potential sale, which means they are going to sell the team. Nobody comes out and says that and then doesn't sell the team. So he's looking to make a lot of money. I think he was purchased. It was purchased for like 184 million dollars or something like that. 183, and, something like that. Yeah. And it's worth over $2 billion now. Uh, so I guess good on Artie Moreno. And the initial reaction that I got from Angel's Twitter, because I'm pretty plugged in there. Yeah. My guy Soto, my guy Max, they were uh, out there. Also, obviously, Nate Steele, our guy. Uh, everyone's happy. Everyone's happy. And this makes me wonder about what happens with Otani and Trout. And I think that everyone's saying, oh, well, this makes it easier to trade Otani this off season, this makes it you know easier to trade Trout or, or something like that. I don't know if I agree with that. I think this is something where if you're selling this team, you want both of those guys on your team, and then you let the person that comes in, the ownership group that comes in, decide that. If you have control over what we're calling the baseball's unicorn, you keep control over that and let somebody else decide what to do with it. This is kind of changing my thinking of how they're going to handle Otani now. I don't know if you guys agree with that or not, but I don't see how it goes any other way. Well, I mean, that's what kind of with, with Soto is they want to sell the team, so they wanted to lock him up or or just shed everything because he was owed a lot of money. So 
it's one well, he wasn't owed a lot of money he was just going to be a free agent so i well in, was, arbitra- yeah. in arbitration if they yeah, stayed it, it yeah. would have he would he's going to get up he's going to break the record soto like he's going to get 30 million in his arb two um or more than that i think i don't think close. that it's, it's weird that they would even care about that because it's one year deals the entire time i don't know yeah i don't know it either um my question is like it, baseball hot in the streets that we're just getting so many teams sold it feels like do you think you're this is a signal that teams are trying to get out while the getting's good i don't know i don't know i mean i guess we had a big window at the end of uh turn of the decade like when the um I'm looking at it now. Rangers in 2010, Astros in 2011, Padres in 2012, Dodgers in 2012. So maybe it is I just think, constantly going. The I Mets. think what we're seeing is it's just been a good deal to be an owner. And these guys are businessmen. And when they say, you know what? How much did we lock in right now? How much can we lock in with this sale? What is the What's the valuation of our team? And these guys see these numbers, and it's hard not to to to, to go. What? And what maybe team, Artie Moreno's getting a little old now, and he's a day to day guy. He's at the field all the time. You go down team, there, you're going to see Artie Moreno. What maybe he's over it. What team's been the same ownership for the longest? Any guesses? Uh, the longest New York Yankees. Yep. By eight years, 1973. Well, that's been there for quite some time in Minnesota as well. 1984, it says. 84. And the Phillies, 1981. Those the are the, Yeah. And those are the old. Told you, he's jacked. He's an old guy, but he's got abs. Interesting. Mm. Hardy wants to go chill on the beach. He's 76. Give me my, give me my three bill and let me hang out, man. Yeah, yeah. That that's basically I think what's happened is these guys are just businessmen. They're seeing an opportunity to cash out, go whatever. You know, it's a lot of stress when you have Mike Trout, Shohei, Anthony Rendon. I wonder if there's something where MLB doesn't want two for sale at the same time. Although it has happened in the past a bunch. In 2002, it says three teams got bought in that in that year. But now it's going to be Nationals and the Angels. Which team would you rather buy? Angels. Mm, that's tough. Angels. Angels, yeah. 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 <laughs> either. I'll take either. You want to yeah. hand me a team? I'll be like, I want to be like the guy who's like a minority stakeholder. Doesn't really call the shots, but is the face. I want I want all the questions coming to you. You want Jeter? That was Jeter's that role. Jeter, like Magic Johnson with the Dodgers. I think he had something like yeah. that. I'd be perfect for that. I think Magic got some significant stake, though. He's a he's a crazy businessman. Yeah. Let's pivot Let to this. the... Wait, can yeah. I ask you one question about Jeter? Yeah, sure. always. Since we're here. We're you, guys watched, people. you guys watch the doc? No, I watched two and a half episodes. I'm 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 like four in, I think. I Has it that. made you like him more or like him less? Or the same? Mm, the same. Tough for me to like him any more. So I don't know. I, I would guess maybe a little more, but probably the same. Yeah, it's kind of same with just a reminder of what I haven't why learned anything new. Much. Yeah, I haven't learned anything new. So I'm guessing people that didn't grow up like with him as their like eight like he was my hero. Like I read every book written about Jeter. I follow, I listened to every post game press conference, like, cause I was a diehard Yankee fan. So I haven't really learned much new. So it, I would say it's the same. The one thing I learned was about how he like really just didn't hang out with anybody. Is that really true though? Like it, the way they portray it, it makes it seem like he just like hung out with what Posada and like his boys. Well, he had a, that was what like strawberry told him it was like, keep a very tight knit group of people. And it was really hard to crack. Yeah. Guarded. He had to have like go out with his teammates every once in a while. Well, Everybody I mean, he was a, he went out all the time. They like made commercials about it. He got in trouble by Steinbrenner for partying too much. But with so, his boys, like on the team. Yeah, I think that's who we would go out with. I think he went out with them. It just okay. That's certain good. friendship threshold. I like it's it's made me like him more. Good. 
feels authentic. Sometimes I thought, am I getting real Jeets? It feels authentic. I think people want real Jeets to be a little different, that that's who he is. Yeah. I think is, yeah, yeah. All right. There's some interesting uh, stats and articles about the new rules they're testing out in the minor leagues. MLB Network actually broadcasted a AAA game that's using some of these new rules. Trev, you were excited about this, as was I, because I did not realize they're doing basically what Jake's been asking for for a while with the robot strike zone. In some levels, they're just the robot strike zone makes the call. A lot of the, uh, mm-hmm. it was like the Atlantic League and the independent leagues. We don't like that. I will be okay with that when the technology matches what everybody understands as the strike zone, which it's not right now. Like someone just posted recently uh, a strike that like you can see how the technology would say it nipped the corner, Mm. but it didn't like go through the plate and someone tweeted at me. I'm like, yeah, but that's why they're guinea pigging it. They're testing it out. Yeah. Make sure it's good, but it's still not, not great. Yeah. What they're doing is they have a challenge system in place. And I love the parameters by which teams can challenge. So each club starts with three challenges of balls and strikes. A correct challenge is retained. So obviously you get it right. You don't lose the challenge. Incorrect challenge is lost. Challenges may only be made by the batter, the catcher, or the pitcher. No help from the dugout, no replay. You can't check it and then like then signal to the pitcher. And it has to happen pretty quick. I watched the one that they challenged and got overturned. I mean, it happens immediately. The pitcher goes like this on his head, taps his head, and and then they challenge it and it got overturned. That's awesome. I'll stop there. Um, because we can talk about some more of the, the data and other stuff, but I think that excited uh excited us that they couldn't, the dugout doesn't challenge just the people on the field. I like that a lot. I think that is the best thing that they could do with this. We've been calling for the challenge of balls and strikes. I think that it works for me. If even if there isn't an automated zone, if there's just an umpire back there and they have the automated automated zone as a backup for the replay, like I'd be okay with that. As long as you have these challenges, you know, three a game and you can do it. I love the fact that they've taken the dugout out of the game. I love the fact that there's not some dude, and no offense to all these dudes because I know some of them, that just sit back there on a computer and watch the fucking game. And they're why are they involved in the game? Like they're not part of the team. And they've become part of the team because of this. And like again, no offense to these guys, but like I feel like everyone's probably would rather just the people on the field play the game, be part of the game. So having that, I, I I like this system even for challenges on the field. No calling to see if there is we should challenge or not. Trust your players. And what, what they've said, in, and what they've said in this article is, you know, these teams now have had to decide. Okay, how are we going to approach this? Are we going to? One organization said we're not letting our pitchers challenge whatsoever. The only our catchers can do it. I love that because we know how. We, I know how pitchers are. I, you guys know how pitchers are. They'll be challenging every dang thing that comes across. So I think it, there's a little bit of strategy involved in that. We can still get the calls right. And, and then it just it makes it seem more like baseball, right? I, get, I guess with any implementation, it, there's a reason you test, right? Like Pitchcom was a little nervous this year. But, you know, generally it's all right. You know, I know we've commented how – you know, maybe get a different audio system or a different system because we see pitchers stepping off and they can't hear it. And it's like, okay, let, let's let's try something else. Maybe that might might work a little better. But, you know, Pitchcom, I was very hesitant on. And, you know, it, it's worked decently. It's worked decently well. Um, the athlete part of this is fun, right? But it's also scary for me because y- you mentioned, you know, in that same conversation, you guys said how you liked team saying a pitcher can't challenge because they're trying to compete. Their goal is to get you out, take it out of their hands where the catcher, A, they have the best view in the house for it, and catchers are usually a a little more composed. 
And I guess that's where I'd actually get nervous about this because think about when we talk about when players don't act like normal members of society because, Jim, you say it a lot. Like, you know, these guys are running hot. These guys are like our version of Roman warriors. I I wouldn't expect them to be clear-headed at the time. I I would just be worried that I, I would have a couple hitters come up early in the game and they'd see that borderline strike three and they go, well, check it. And it's like, well, hey, hey, man, you know, that was... Two outs, no runners on base, and that was a close pitch. I, I don't think you should be challenging that. And I don't know if that should be in the players' hands because now uh, you're wrestling teammates and you could be affecting later in the game when the whole goal of this should be to get the calls right. I, yeah, I, we're trusting, you're trusting your players. I, you you got to be a good teammate. You got to yeah, know the situation. Understand the situation. You better not, yeah. I think you'd stop having guys, like guys run constantly hot. going, guys yeah, but they'd have hot. to know. Like, this is how, um, like, cricket and other sports is, like, the players on the field do it. And in cricket, there's a uh, – the captain is the only one that's allowed to, like, tell the umpire. But he has to go ask his guys, like, really? Really? They don't get to, like, look at it and review it, and then they do it. Well, I almost like that is, more. Like, well, ha- have a designated guy that has to run it well, through Well, that's, yeah. that's, why, that's why teams are saying the catcher. Yeah. And, but and if, the you're the hitter, not to do it. if you're the hitter, you don't have a catcher. Like, I almost like if there's a, if the hitter gets someone to check with, like the pitcher has the catcher. I would love if the hitter has who's like, the, who's going to check for the hitter well, though? Who would know? Like the designated team captain, like we're saying. And if they, but, how, but he doesn't like, have a good view of it. No, but I, he has a decent view of it. And he could say, like, hey, man, it, it's the third inning and there's two outs. Like, no, we're, we're no, not. Doing I like the speediness of it. It's so quick. You have yeah, to you do have it to go quick. right away. You don't even get like five seconds. I, I like it because it keeps it moving and it stops. Like the bad thing about replay right now is every guy slides in. They're like, review it, review it, review it. Takes that away. Cause if you're wrong, you're now a bad teammate because you're taking something away that your team can use. I think teams are probably like, Hey, first four innings, unless there's runners in scoring position or yes. bases loaded, there'll be, like, be parameters. Like no, no challenge, but that's a, that's up to the team. Like we're not yes. challenging a single yes. ball and strike unless there's two outs. And I like that. And I like that there's some, gameplay involved but also speediness because if if you get to step off and look to the dugout and then they get to look at it like trev saying i i'm i i, I like this for replay on the field because it's it takes forever sometimes mm-hmm. and every player go, hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on, hold on, oh, on. I hate that. every player just thinks that they're safe or out or you know and they're telling the the, they're always telling the dugout, like, review that, review that, review that. It would take that nonsense out. Like, you would not be able to just... Like, well, there'd be a lot less reviews, I think. Yeah, yeah. You'd have to keep yourself in check. Like, you have to be a bit more honest. Like, nah, don't review that. I was, I was, you, I was safe. I, I guess that's my concern. I, I guess with players running hot... Uh, no, you- that's the great part about it, too, Jake. I think what you're referencing is rogue players. That's a great storyline, too. Dude, what if you your team sets these parameters up and you're like, nope, fuck that. Bam, hit your helmet, whatever the signal is. Or I think the drama between a pitcher and a catcher, when a pitcher is like, challenge that, and the catcher's like, mm-mm, mm-mm. You know? I think that's great. I think I think this, the taking the people out, like, I don't even like when a, pitching coach is signaling to the catcher, like telling them when to pick off. Like when they're given, I hate that. Why, why do you need to tell a professional catcher how to control the running game? You shouldn't have to do that. So like, and that's initially why I was for paper too in the field. Although James, you've kind of convinced me otherwise. I like the fact that dudes could just have the paper and not have to look in the dugout at their coach waving his arms like that. I want the players to do the heavy lifting of the baseball games. I mean, I get it, and I like it. Uh, my only concern would be the original problem here is umpires getting the call wrong. Um, so if I end up in the ninth inning of a big game and a ball or strike gets missed and a team's used their three challenge, we haven't necessarily cured the problem. Um, well, you just wouldn't. You just make sure you, like, you know, don't waste them. But that's not necessarily if you only how it have, works. If, if an ump's if having a have, bad day and you have to burn your challenges and, and some of them hit or, and one doesn't and now you're out, I, I don't know. I That's my only concern, and I, I don't know. I'd love to watch it play out, and I know that's what they're doing in the minor leagues, but at the end of the day, the whole idea around this is to get the call right, and if we set up parameters where we get too far away from that, then – it happens already, it. though. It happens already because you only have a certain amount of challenges 
now. Yeah, you got to save right. your challenges to the end. Be smart about it. I like it because it keeps the game moving, which is the next the next thing that they're testing is the pitch clock. And this is another situation where people constantly post the videos of a batter not getting in the stepping in the box in time or a pitcher taking too long and then it counts as a ball. And they're like, this isn't what people want to see. It's like, yeah, obviously this isn't what people want to see. They're, we're implementing a new thing. So we don't like this. The, the goal is not to have balls charged to the the pitcher mm -hmm. or the or to, because he took too long. The goal is that no one ever causes an infraction and it stings for the guys that are testing this. But the results of of the new pitch clock are awesome. The numbers behind it are really good. They've shaved um, 26 minutes off total game time. So that's 26 minutes of nothing. Yes. Like that's what they're taking out. It's just the standing around. Nothing's happening time. So the average game uh, was three hours and three minutes last year. It's two hours, 37 minutes this, this year. That's a nice time for a game. Like I don't mind longer games when they're good and engaging, mm -hmm. especially when you're at the ballpark, but man, two hours and 30 minutes on TV. That's like a good window of um, sport, especially if you want people to stick around and, and be, uh, or or dive in and be new fans. Then when you get to the postseason, they can run a little longer and be a little more like, you know, gripping. The runs per game has stayed the same. Mm -hmm. The batting average has stayed basically the same, 246 to 249. The strikeout percentage, 24.5% to 25.6%. Walk percent, 10, 10.5, 10.5 again. And the hit by pitch, 1.6 and 1.6. So it has not affected anything mm -hmm. besides taking out a lot of non action from the total runtime and speed up the pace of play. So that's, that's good news. I don't want to sound like the old guy. Okay. You guys know I'm very guarded of that. I always tell myself, don't be that guy. Uh, I think the difference in what we're seeing in the game now and maybe what it was in the 80s, 70s, 80s, whatever it is. I think social media has a big part in that. Everybody now wants their shot. Everybody now wants their sign. That's that's a lot of the dead part is guys stepping out, you know, breathing, like knowing that like, this is my moment, this is me, me, me. And it just kind of happens for every part of the game, dude. Like uh, you make a catch in the outfield, you you know the eyes are on you, so you might like keep those eyes on you a little longer. You step out of the box, you're the pitcher. You you know, there's just so many things like that that are going on that I think have a little bit to do with like the social media generation. I have no problem those guys getting their shine on, uh, but only when it's appropriate. This is gonna help. I've played with the pitch clock before, and it's great. Only the only guys that get infractions on this are guys that are like. They just need to clean it up a little bit. The game moves at a pace that feels a little bit quicker, but isn't where you feel like you're rushed to get into the box. And, you know, you can always call timeout. The pitcher does have – this is interesting to me because now they're limiting the disengagements from the the rubber, whether that's a step-off or a pick-off. So you get two per, and that's that's interesting to me because that, that then now lends itself to – a more running, uh, more stolen bases. So I think you probably have to keep one pickoff, one disengagement, so you have that threat of a pickoff. But I don't know. I, I I like the pitch clock. The numbers support it, and it does only cut out the dead time. It's not like it's working against the gameplay pretty much whatsoever. It's It seems cool, right? And I uh, again, I... Something I defer to the players. Uh, Terrence Gore referenced in this article, uh, base running specialist, uh, World Series. Yeah, of course he likes it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the players like it, and uh, if they like it, I, I think the other thing that's you know, if you do the gap between the minor leagues and and MLB, you're gonna add some commercials there, so the the time comes comes back up a little bit. Yeah, you just uh, y you hope there's a little bit of feel because I know. Uh, like you said, Jim, you know, when, when there's a moment in a game and it's awesome, when there's a 
three to two playoff game and it's the eighth inning, no one's talking about pitch clock, right? <laughs> Everyone's talking to the person next to him like, you got to throw the slider, right? And, you know, he goes back, he puts a little rosin on him. You see his wheels turning. You see the batter thinking. You know, those those moments in baseball are the moments where you're like, hey, turn <laughs> turn the pitch clock off, babe. Let's, uh, let's, let's let this happen. Um, but, yeah, man, it – there is a lot of funny business, kooky baseball going on, as as Trev was talking about. That yeah, if if we could trim the fat a little bit, because even a three hour baseball game is sweet. Three hour baseball game is nice. You start getting three twenty, three thirty of a bad baseball game, it gets a little long on you. I I use this comparison today. I can't believe I'm using it again. If any of you are runners out there, I'm not. Uh, but Trev, you're a runner. There's times when you run for 45 minutes and it's a breeze and you're like, that was a nice run. There's times when you run for 45 minutes and you're like, damn, that, that felt like hell today. I think you could use that for baseball. And I, and I don't think that's being rude to anyone, but, you know, a, a three and a half hour good game, awesome. A three and a half hour bad game, you know, it gets long quick. So, yeah, let's try it out. I'm even fine with them grandfathering in pitchers now. Like if they were to implement this next year, I would do a cutoff where like Lance Lynn, oh you don't have God. to fucking abide by this, yeah. you know, or if you are, you, you have accrued this much service time, you're fine. Grandfather it in because I don't want balls on, especially at the MLB level. I don't want a pitcher to take too long and then a ball to be added to the count. So I hope by the time this comes, the minor league pitchers have been adhering to it. They're fine. And then I would grandfather in MLB pitchers because nobody wants that. You just want the next generation to come up to be faster. And it's shaving off the time uh, of the total run time. But like that's pace is the much bigger problem right now. Yeah. MLB games average four minutes between balls put in play. Mm. That's so bad. That's too much conversation, Jim. You always refer to this sport as a conversational sport. Too much conversation too much. for me. Imagine like an NBA game and it was four minutes between a shot. That's kind and of what I know I there's think way of. more shots than balls in play, but still, like that's too long. And they say pitchers are around the zone more, like they've asked in, and batters are uh like ready to swing more because they don't step out of the box. So they're saying the the pace in between is good as well. It's it's yeah, I mean. You can always call timeout if you want to have a let a big moment breathe. Like mm -hmm. you know, teams can always call a timeout, whatever you need to do. Um, are we still going to be able to call baseball the only game without a clock? Mm. No. Well, yeah. Yeah. Because like extra innings. But we have a clock. Yeah, but that, that doesn't dictate the end of the game. Dictates still the end of the, the pitches. a pitch. Golf also doesn't have a clock. Yeah. True. People, people forget that the pickoff thing, only two pickoffs. I I thought that was really going to change the stolen base game. I thought that was going to be huge. They have the numbers. It's it's not it's not that crazy. Uh, stolen base attempts are up. They were. What is this? How are they doing this? Stolen base attempts in MLB are up from two point two three in twenty nineteen. So is that per game? To two point eight one. I don't know how they're. I don't know what those numbers mean. And the success rate has risen as well. The success rate risen pretty decently, 68% to 77. The attempts are only up a little bit, but good. Stolen bases are fun. Have more of those. I'm for it. I, you know, one of my general rule of rules is if this rule was imp implemented when I learned the game of baseball, would I question it? And if there was a two pickoff rule when I learned the game of baseball, I would have been like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. You, yeah, you can. Oh, you can't throw over to first base eight times in a row. Yeah, that makes sense actually. So yeah, I'm cool with that. I, I'm. That's the one thing I'm iffy on. I, I think is catchers don't like that. Pitchers probably don't like that. So when you have you know a couple groups of guys that play the game that aren't going to be fond of it, and runners, I feel like are probably really fond of that, even though we can't really find the numbers on that. But John Lester, I think, I think that that's just like them trying to prevent a loophole in, in the pitch clock system. I think the greater good is for the game to be quicker. So they're willing to sacrifice that. Yeah. 
again, that one I don't really love either. But if it's not changing that much, we get a lot of, I wonder, what do you think the percent of pickoffs are where there's a purpose behind it? Because sometimes you you throw a, and the purpose isn't to give the reliever more time in the bullpen. It just, if it's, depends if it's a base dealer on, on base or not. I mean, that's yeah. the one thing. If you have a base, I'd say it's, base, I'd say it's fifty percent of the time the pick the 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 pickoff has to do with the base runner. Right now, you have so many empty ones where they're just buying time. Yeah, sounds- and this this will incorporate more slide steps. I I'd assume if you if you can't pick off, I mean what? Okay, so if you can't pick off, and you're the runner. Can't you just get a humongous lead? Because I'd assume once you start going, that's a different play, so then you can step off. But you can get an enormous lead and not go until he goes to the plate, right? I think same with the challenges. And you just got to keep one in your pocket. Be smarter about it. Stop like doing stuff just because you can. You know, that's that sounds really good until you get picked off. You can't get picked off. I thought you got two throws. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If say they did two throws, and then the, oh. after that one, you could just get as far off as you want. You then couldn't the, run. The pitcher. I don't think up. you're. I I wonder how many times have got people have gotten two throws. I'm curious. That yeah, that's what I'm saying. I guess this hasn't been tested too much. So, you know, some pitchers have their B move that they need to set up their A move, and then that that would be risking both their throws oh, to get the guy out. Man, that's so funny. A guy uses his two throws, then we're just playing chicken. Just straight you can up. get off to you can you can go eighty nine feet f- with your lead, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, yeah, there's got to be something around it. I don't know. I don't hey, know. sound off in the comments what we're missing. Sound off. Yeah. The, speaking of bases, they're also enlarge. They're enlarging the bases, which are fifteen inches square. Now they're going to eighteen inches square. And Terrence Gore, who's a base dealer and in that article said, like, there's no difference. He was like, they're flatter and they so you can push off better. You pop up slide better. Your fingers don't get jammed as much because they're not just a straight square. They're like they they gradually go up and that's the bigger change. And he was like, they don't mess up my stride. They haven't really like messed me well, up at all. The bases are like round right now. Like they have the flat edges, but in the middle of it, there's like a hump, which I never really understood. I guess it's to focus your foot on the ins. I don't know why they do that actually. And they're slippery as fuck. Yeah. You've seen so, the new ones though, right? Yeah. So they're a little softer, right? But they're sloped down like way more. So for preventing the jam fingers. And, and like you can push off a little bit and, and pop up a little bit. Um, this, this shouldn't affect anything. I don't think. No, I think they just kind of did it more for safety measure than gameplay. Yeah. yeah. I think I got news for people. Uh, I, I don't think this is going to be the last base change we see. T- technology just gets better. Like, picture some of the bases you played with in Little League. I, I had the base that popped out. I think people had the base that went in with stakes and was just a pillow. Like, hey, as base technology develops, let's do it. If it's a little bigger, cool, man. Like, I, I mean, if if you're getting hot, about the three inch bigger bases. Hey, sound off. About, sound off in the comments. Think about how sick base cam is going to be now. We got three oh. extra inches to play with. Well, but they're skinnier, so maybe they can't even do it. TBS is fucked. Well, yeah, because tough. That's a tough technology camera. So I don't. Oof. We'll just have the base runners hold a camera. And they that was a book I wanted to write. Maybe I still want to. Why isn't there fucking 360 fucking HD GoPro cameras in? In the base. The base could probably be made out of a camera at this okay, point. The base right. should be a complete freaking camera, bro. With when sensors. Ch- I wanted to... Whatever. I wanted to... Uh, when did they change from pillows to bases? I don't know. Because I want to go read all the quotes. Has there been players. a lot of... How many I, How many changes have there been to the bases? Probably a lot. Probably. The slippery ones were the dumbest. That's what I had. Now they're softer and not as slippery. That's great. <laughs> you couldn't wear molded spikes like if they, the game was a little wet and those were like fresh, freshly painted bases because that's what they do. They just repaint these bases to make them nice and pearly white. And then they're slippery as all hell. 
while we're here, I, I know we've done this a few times and we'll probably do it, I mean, over the years even more, but uh, would you guys ever be up for like a, a neighborhood rule, like taking away the replays when a guy's absolutely. foot comes off the bag for a second? Yeah. Oh, oh my absolutely. Gosh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it then. And not like yeah. the double play. At, not the double play situation. Right. Like you um, beat the throw to second base, but then you. That come was a neighborhood for rule. a second. Yeah. Yeah. I'd give it like a hover zone or like two inches or um, less than a second if you like re engage. Yeah. That's. that's you, have, you have to phrase but it that, so it's not like overslides are getting called for or getting that, like allowed, but. Yeah, if you overslide, you you're automatically out. Yeah. Even if you get back to the base, that's my new rule. If you overslide like that, you're out. It gets too nuanced, but I agree with that. You have to figure uh, out the such a dumb or slide. Or if to overslide a base, or, or you're just really, really fast. I went guess. too far. Yeah, too fast. slide earlier. Michael K always says, maybe other people do as well. Well, then just don't allow replays in slow mo. Like if you challenge it and you use replay, you're not allowed to use slow mo shots or or zoomed in shots. You, it has to be wrong, yeah, so blatantly that you can see it in the replay, and you're like, "Yes, that ball beat him." That's but when we go like frame by frame and like enhance, enhance. It's like, what? What's this about? That's why people complain about it because the cameras got too good. Not in the bases; they can't figure that shit out. But the other cameras got too good, and so people started paying attention to stuff. Before, I mean, you didn't have to swipe the base a second on a double play. You could just you would go, you would practice. And behind second base, if you're a shortstop, there'd just be a big like semicircle where guys would drag their toe. They wouldn't be on the base at all, and that would be yeah, that, you turn it. That was play the that true. Way. That was the true neighborhood play. Yes, and then and they no like, one cared about that, and then the slow mo cameras came. Yeah, I like hover rule. I think that works. But if you go past, no, no. I'm just starting to think about all the base technology technology that should be out there you could have listen to this you could have like a radar surrounding the base that came out of the base that allowed you for a neighborhood play so yeah nice. you just have it pop up and they'll let you know if you're in that zone that's like it straight up yeah base base technology maybe should be our next venture because that is sorely overlooked as an industry it, it's it's bad i know we're supposed to i wanted to move on but this was another thing a while ago did we talk about this did when they put the actual lines for the shift on the field, did you guys see them? So the way they're doing the lines in the infield, no one can stand directly behind second mm -hmm. base. We yeah. were under the uh, assumption that it was going to be like a straight line from, or I was, from, from second to the outfield. And then someone could still stand there, but their foot would be like on the line, but they'd still basically be behind second. But no, it's like, it's almost like the a zone, like no fielder can be in this zone, which I love. If the ball the is hit over second base, mm -hmm. it needs to be an athletic play to get that ball and throw them out. Not just, you can just stand right behind the base. That's better. Those poor pitchers are going to have to be fielders again. You're gonna have to. You you can't. You're not gonna have all these guys landing with their back towards the hitter because you got to field your position now. Or I will just say, a bunch of dribblers up the middle. Having the lines on the field looks stupid. This looks ugly. They'll be advertisements before we know it. Just like <laughs> a banner. Of oh yeah, it's true. Tomboy yeah. media on the field. It'll be you know? it'll be zone. a bunch of pizza companies. Yeah, that's a big Perfect. area. That'll be their slice. Maybe BBD has it on the screen now. It's a big area where you're not allowed to have fielder. Yeah. There's way that's not how I pictured it. Yeah, it's like a At 90 covering degree me. angle coming off. Can they go second. in front of it? Yeah. I guess so. I think yeah, oh, I think yeah. you'd be good there. That's right? a good point, Jake. Wow. Always Loophole. Thinking. Never think you're playing. You like watched like uh Rover. You wa if you watch Sandy Alcantara pitch this year, you know he's a good bet. Unless he's facing the Dodgers, mm. which is kind of the next little topic I had put some research into brought to you by DraftKings, because that's just letting you know, don't bet on Sandy Alcantara if he's facing the Dodgers. Just dumb. You can also bet $5 on any team and get $200 in free bets instantly, win or lose. 
And if that's not enough action, you can also place a same game parlay for a shot at an even bigger payout by combining multiple bets in one, like which team will get the win and which team will score first. Last year, Jake and I loved the, this pitcher will give up a home run and his team will lose. Hmm. And you just chose any Orioles pitcher and it, you won every night. I don't think they offer it anymore. And the Orioles are, have a good staff now, but that was the best combo last I, year. I was winning so, money. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code John Boy. We bet just $5 on college football and get $200 in free bets instantly. That's code John Boy on that DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. So I was looking at some results, and obviously I saw Alcantara gets owned by the Dodgers. Um, hmm. His numbers are crazy. Only one start this year, but it was bad. And then um, Ryan Finkelstein tweeted out that Zach Wheeler has a 491 ERA against the Mets this season. He has a 272 against everyone else. And I remember back when we were kind of early on doing the show and, and Barrios, your old teammate, Trev, you were like, he's a young candidate. And Jake and I both kind of like, what? And it was because the Yankees never really had too much of a problem with him. I think he had some good starts, but he was never seen as a threat and baseball. So regional, sometimes fans just judge guys by what, how do they perform when they play your team? You know, if you don't sure. follow the whole league, like there's some 60 to 80 year old Dodgers fans out there that have no idea. Sandy Alcantara is good. <laughs> they just see that name and think we're going to win big tonight. Cause that's what they've done all five times. They faced him in the last like three years or whatever it is. So I was trying to find if there's any other out there, it was a little tough of a task. So I guess commenters like comment below, like who's a stud pitcher that your team doesn't fear. I, I found a couple from this year only. Um, let me pull it up. Where'd it go? Hey, shit. Where did it go? Where did it go? All right, here it is. So I just took the top 10 ERA leaders in both league leagues. I found their, their average stat line per game, not per nine innings. Because so I think we should get away from that because they did per nine innings back when you were expected to go nine innings. Now pitchers don't go nine innings. So I like doing per game. And then found teams that just... Do better than that. The one I found was Justin Verlander. I struggled against the White Sox this year. If that was a matchup that was to happen in a DS somehow or whatever, like that would the White Sox fans, maybe they don't feel that bad. He uh he averages eight and a half hits a game in two games. The average is eight against the White Sox, Verlander, uh, and five runs. Got a three five. Uh, he's got a five nine one ERA. Verlander against the White Sox. So I wonder if White Sox fans feel confident against him, or this is just like a blip. But yeah, Verlander struggled against the White Sox. Is Our that guy, at, for, is that both places too? Has he pitched at both? Well, I can check that. I'm wondering if some of it has to do with how you feel at a certain park. I would guess both because that's how it is when they're not in the same division, right? Yeah. yeah, he's not going to pitch twice in the same series. So yes, for that it has to be both because Verlander's yeah, not going to. Hey, that yeah, makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, uh, our guy Framber Valdez. So it was two Astros that had had some. Um, Framber Valdez ERA on the year is two seven two. His ERA against the Guardians is four oh five. Guardians have a seven sixty four OPS against him. Uh, and they average do, do seven hits a game where he averages only usually five hits a game. And, um, and, uh, one homer a game, I guess. But that was the other one. Um, Martin Perez, Trev, your twins have handled him like easily this year. I saw him and said, What's up to him this weekend? He's got a six ERA against the twins, a 280 against. Uh, for the season, which means it's lower against the non-twins. 
Yes. To, to me, this, this all could mean a couple different things. One, it's you just don't match up against their lineup, plain and simple. What you do well, the other team doesn't care about, and then what you do poorly, they feast on that. Could be that. Another thing, could be, this team's got something. Yeah, or, or completely like, random. Like, uh, like it, it could, could be, be completely like, random. Like you just had two bad nights, they happen to fall against the same guy. But I just, I just always find it fascinating from the fans' perspective. If Twins fans are like Martin Perez, good year, like we've destroyed him. Sure, D- definitely yeah. different views of different pitchers. We, we yeah. had, I think I've mentioned this before, 2015. What's that? It's a long time ago. Geez, uh, Chris Sale with the White Sox. Um, his numbers against us. He finished one in four against us. Twenty-seven earned runs in thirty-three innings against us. I don't know what the math is on that. That's like an eight something ERA against us. And Jeez. they, and he was nasty that year. Like I think he ended up in the twos somewhere. So you can imagine if he actually just pitched competently against us, what he'd be like you're saying, James. And they said, Oh, we know you got something. Tyler flowers. used to say that to me all the time. Even in this article I'm reading about it, he said, they must have a tip, blah, blah, blah. Truth is we didn't, or one of us did. Dozier had something on him that nobody else could see. <laughs> Everyone was like, what are you talking about, bro? And I'm good at that. You know I'm good at it. Couldn't pick it up. He had something. All the rest of us, it, I guess it was contagious. I don't know what it was, but maybe it was Dozier starting the game off with a banger. So what I was going to say, and was I, he leading off? He was leading off. Maybe that was just the confidence we needed. Whatever it was, we, we handled him that year. We knew he was a good pitcher. It's not like we were like, oh, yeah, we're going to feast on sale. I mean, we did think that. But it wasn't like we thought he sucked. It was just like, you know what? We see this guy well. Like, we understand what he's trying to do to us. We've seen him enough now. Um, but that was definitely, shoot, man, tough year for sale against us. Ah, dude, Dozier in his first, in Dozier in 2015 against sale, 316 batting average, 350 on base, 982 slugging, three doubles, one homer. It's cool. So when he's trying to tell you that, Trev, when Dozier's like, is he like trying to explain it in like minutia? Like it's look at his pinky when he's doing this and you guys are all going up there and then you come back and you're like, Doge, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't know if I should give it away because maybe some teams still have it. I don't you know. You don't have to, but it, it had but something to do with um his but he's mannerism. Trying. He's, oh, trying, yeah, of to he's trying to tell us. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, it was it had something to do with like his mannerisms during a certain pitch and like and the way his body was during that pitch and try as I may, man, I just, I just couldn't find it enough. There were times where I could see it, but I couldn't find enough where I ever used it. I love it. It'd be, it'd be funny if it, it wasn't real, but it gave Dozier so much confidence and he guessed right a couple times. Could be. And, and you guys were like, Doge, that's not happening. He was like, Bull, trust me. Yeah. Some guys convince themselves of that 100%. Isn't that so funny? I mean, think about the phrase, a look in their eye. Like when you say someone has a look in their eye and, you know. It's almost what it was, da- bro. Daddy Dozier just being like, you can you can tell when he's going to chuck a fastball, and he's from the dude. sticks, he's too. He's got like, that hey. look in his eye. Yeah. He's got that hunter. He's got that right. hunter He can tell vibe. when a deer is, he can tell when a deer is scared. So he knows what? when Sale's going to snap a slider. I mean, that's what? Dozier baseball. Boys from Hagerstown just had a triple, so. Huge. Hey, my Huge dad news. said Hawaii is going to run through that tournament. So Canada looks good. Hawaii looks good. The Tennessee team, I thought they looked good, but Hagerstown gave him trouble. So Chinese I don't know. Taipei. Yeah, he said that was yeah. two Chinese Taipei yeah. and Hawaii. I think they're Taiwan Taipei. guys. Taiwan. Taiwan. Oops. They they list the team as Chinese Taipei because they're scared of China. I'm not. Um. Yeah. I mean, Chris Sale. Or not Chris Sale, our our guy Garrett Cole against the Red Sox career in Fenway. Uh, hitters have an 868 OPS against them. And like like you were dancing around, Trev, I mean, is it the mound? Is it the hitters? Is it the ballpark? It's probably a little bit of all three. Devers got hot on him, on, on him this year. But, uh, yeah, man, that's, uh, you know, it would be funny if, It'd be funny if one of those came playoff time. If if our if the mid Sox could put it together and give me a Justin Verlander sh- start, sign me up for that. Sorry, I'm ordering lunch right now. What are you ordering? Um, Olivia asked what I wanted from In and Out. 
What's your internet order? Double double. Double double spread and chopped chilies. Only. Mm. No onions. Mm. Chopped chilies. Yeah. Chopped chilies good. I nice. didn't eat anything all day, so I'm starving. I had a string cheese and a spoonful of peanut butter before the show, and that's all I've eaten. But it's twelve twenty for you. It's three twenty for me. Okay. So, Get you some food okay. in you. Both bad. I will. Well, I don't eat breakfast, but then I've been on this mic since uh, 10 a.m., so we'll see ya. We might edit all this out, but if not, comment on your favorite hue of blue. Right, Robin's egg. Robin's egg blue. Carolina. Midnight My hat's blue. not crooked. Carolina it's not crooked. Blue. Navy blue. A boom, a boom, boom. Deep ocean. I think this is Mets blue. Could Mets be. Blue. New York.